let's go over how to use EdgeGap with Fish Networking. EdgeGap is one of the easiest hosting options that automatically scales and deploy your game servers to over 600 locations worldwide. You can even launch servers from Unity and integration takes minutes. Their pricing is very fair. You only pay for what bandwidth you use. So if you're using a bandwidth optimized solution such as FishNet, you're going to save quite a lot. For these reasons, it's also why we're very happy to have them as one of our sponsors. Let's go ahead and move along so you can try them out yourself. Starting in FishNet version four, EdgeGap will actually be bundled with FishNet so you can easily get started just by clicking the EdgeGap menu up here in the top and then choosing EdgeGap hosting. And if this window does not come up, you are probably missing a dependency. The dependency already should have been installed, but you know how things go. So if it didn't pop up, just go to Window, and then go to Package Manager, click the plus sign, add package by name, paste in com.unity.nuget.newtonsoft-json, and leave the version blank. Then go ahead and click Add. If you need that typed out, I'll have it in the video description. Now you should be able to access this menu, and once you have it up, go ahead and click the get a token button. Once done, you're going to see a page like this. And over here at the bottom, you'll click don't have an account, get started. After you fill out all of this information and sign up, you'll be asked to verify your email and you'll see something like this. Once you log into your email and click that verify button, it'll be brought up here to set up your organization. I went ahead and entered first gear games and I'm going to confirm organization. After you have your organization made, you're going to see something like this, but we can actually skip all this. There's an easier way to do it. Go back to Fishnet and then click the get a token button again. Being that you're already logged in, this will pop up with a one click token. Go ahead and click copy and then continue. And then go back to Fishnet and paste that token in where it says API token and click verify. Name your application, whatever you like. I'm going to call it test project and then click create application. And I don't really care about adding an icon, so I'm not gonna do that right now. Now this part is pretty important. First, we're going to look at the protocol type. Tugboat is Fishnet's default transport, and that is UDP. So we're going to go ahead and leave that as UDP. And now this port is something that we have to specify on a network manager. So go ahead and open the hash grid underscore demo. This is under the demos folder, under the Fishnet folder, and under scenes, hash grid underscore demo. Select the network manager in the scene, add component, and then type in tugboat. As mentioned, this is the default transport for Fishnet and make sure that that port is indeed the same. Now this is the default port for tugboat. So you wouldn't actually have to do this step, but in the future, you probably will when using custom ports. We are just about ready to build the application and then send it up to their services. So go ahead and click build and push. Those of you that have done things similar to this in the past may not actually see this dialogue and then your build will begin at this point. Docker is not associated with EdgeGap. It is, however, a very trusted product. You don't really have to do much in regards to using it other than installing it and then EdgeGap will do the rest. To save us some time, I went right to the downloads page and I'll also have this link in the description of the video. So let's go ahead and click download for Windows, unless of course you're on Mac or Linux, then go ahead and download for that instead. The process is pretty straightforward. You open the install file, you click OK, and then it installs. But it is worth noting you'll be asked to restart your computer after. And after I restarted, I opened the Docker desktop application. The first launch, you'll be asked to set up using advanced settings or default, and I chose default to keep things simple. After you do that, you'll be given an option to sign in, or there's a little link down on the bottom that says continue without signing in, and that's where I'm at now. As you can see, it says not signed in. This is probably starting to feel a bit intimidating at this point, but you don't really have to know much about it right now. If you're curious, you can go ahead and click view more in the learning center and check out their documentation. Otherwise, go ahead and click the X. I opened my project back up and it was still on the hash grid underscore demo scene. So I went back to the edge gap menu, edge gap hosting, and as you can see, it's right where I left off. So you don't really have to change anything. All we're going to do now is click build and push. And it is very much worth noting that you have to have Linux server build installed for both mono and IL2. CPP. And real quick, if you're not entirely sure what I'm talking about, just head on over to the Unity Hub, click installs, go to your engine version. In this case, it is 2021.329 for me. And then click add modules. And then you're going to choose those modules I mentioned right here. Mine are already installed, of course. So you'll select them and then continue and they will install for you. The build had completed. So at this point, your game is up on all of their servers. And all you have to do is just deploy it. So I'm going to go ahead and click create new deployment. And you're going to see some text here. And eventually something will pop up in this box. 
That literally only took a few seconds for me. Now I'm going to click the clipboard button down here so that I can copy the text. I already have my network manager selected and tugboat component exposed. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in the client address. We don't actually want the port part in the client address, so I'm gonna highlight that, cut it, and don't forget to delete the colon as well, and then go ahead and put the port in the port field. Yes, you can, of course, set these at runtime, and you almost definitely will, as whichever server address and port you use will depend on which deployment you are connecting to, deployment being your game or room. After you do the build and push, sometimes you'll get stuck in the dedicated server mode, but easy to remedy. I went ahead and clicked file and then build settings, which brought this up, and now I'm going to go back to Windows, Mac, Linux, if you, of course, are not already on it, and then click switch platform. And this fiasco is not unique to EdgeGap. It has happened to a variety of hosting solutions I've tried. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide my EdgeGap window, or rather just move it out of the way. Select my network manager, drop it down, select the network HUD canvas, and set the auto start type to disabled if not already, and then hit play. Now clicking client, I'm connected to the EdgeGap deployment we made moments ago. This is extremely useful for testing your game, and it of course makes deployment extremely easy. There's a ton more you can do with EdgeGap, so whenever you have the time, I do recommend checking out their website or even hopping in our Discord and asking them questions yourself in our hosting services channel.